I'm Alan Flower. I work for a company called HCL Technologies. And um, we're going to spend a little bit of time this morning talking about our real world experience deploying PKS. Uh, in particular, we want to share with you what clients are telling us are the, uh, if you like, the real sweet spot applications for PKS uh, inside of their organization. What we've begun to identify are, are a set of really common use cases that seem to be driving customer interest in PKS. They seem to be driving customer deployments of, of, of PKS. So um, in the limited time that we've got, I want to share our experience with you. Hopefully you can learn from some of the experiences we've had uh, too. And uh, you know, importantly, start to show you what clients want to talk about. So what I'm going to share with you, a little bit about our own experience deploying PKS. That's been a really interesting journey uh, for us. Talk briefly about some of the challenges that clients are experiencing in their own cloud native journeys. Uh, I'll help you understand how we position PKS to, to our clients and indeed to pivotal clients uh, as well. We're going to spend a little bit of time looking at these key use cases that come up time and time and time again. And um, if we get time, we'll talk about some of the things to look for, some of those signs and indicators that tell you that a client, an organization, or indeed an application is a good fit for, for PKS. So uh, I'm not here to tell you much about HCL, but look, uh, our, our history is kind of dominated by an awful lot of experience with Cloud Foundry. You know, we, we, we've adopted PCF ourselves as our strategic platform. We've got a lot of experience with various containerization solutions. And uh, what we're trying to do is, is give clients and ourselves a, an opportunity to deploy PKS and PAS successfully into their environments. Where we are today with PKS, we've recently sort of built a global platform to enable ourselves and our clients on, on PKS. Uh, we've opened some cloud native labs that are dedicated to both PCF, well, PKS and PAS. Um, the interesting thing about our experience is we've decided to do this in what I would call uh, on a journey that's very much aligned to the, the pivotal VMware and Dell approach. So we've got experience of standing up PKS on PRA hardware stacks. If you're not familiar with PRA, it's a pre-configured, pre-designed environment that is kind of ready to roll for, for PKS deployments. So we've had experience deploying PKS ourselves into HCL. We've deployed it on Dell PRA equipment. If we get time, we'll explore that. We've deployed PKS onto vanilla hardware. We've deployed PKS onto GCP. And we're waiting to deploy PKS into our big global cloud platform based on, based on Azure. You're probably familiar or aware that Azure support will be coming at some point for, for PKS. We will deploy PKS into all of the environments that we deploy and use ourselves uh, inside HCL. So not only are we consuming PKS ourse ourselves, we've done some early customer deployments as well. That's been a really interesting experience uh, for us. And importantly, we've decided to standardize on PKS inside HCL. This is our, our go-to containerization platform alongside PCF for, uh, for, for PaaS deployments uh, as well. Now, the interesting thing you know, we, many of us probably inhabit a world which is kind of dominated by cloud native thinking. You know, I've, I've got a cloud foundry background myself. Many of you might have a PaaS, you know, background too. It's very easy for us to think that the whole world is building new cloud native apps. We like to think that our entire organization will move to a, a cloud native sort of posture. You know, the reality today is that we've got a long, long, long way to go. If we look at all of the workloads that are running globally in enterprise cloud environments, it's a long way less than 1% of those workloads that are cloud native today. Most workloads are not 12 factor. They're simply, in many cases, not even cloud aware. When you look at the more successful clients that have deployed um, a stronger cloud native uh, approach, you look at those clients that have deployed a PaaS like Cloud Foundry, whether it's Pivotal Cloud Foundry or, or, or someone else's, you rarely find any organization that has more than 10% of its applications on the platform. It's exceptionally rare to get to that sort of level of utilization. 
Uh, we're at a very early stage in this journey, of course, and you know, what clients will share with you, maybe your own experience sort of highlights this too, is that moving your organization to cloud native is actually really difficult. It's more to this than just writing new apps. What do you do with your legacy estate? That's never, ever going away. Lots of organizations uh, are on what we would call a multi-cloud journey. It's quite rare for an organization to only support one CSP, and everyone has a hybrid strategy, of course. So we would like to think that uh, you know, it would be quite easy to you know, implement this vision uh, around cloud native. Everyone has a cloud native strategy. You may recognize this as well. There's a huge conceptual gap between where you want to go and where you are today. Uh, cloud native, if you want to do it properly, if you want to write 12 or maybe 15, 16 factor applications, is very, very, very difficult. Okay? And the, the skills available to do that are in incredibly short supply. The conceptual changes that we all need to make to take this approach are, are not easy for, for a lot of people. Uh, and what we find today is that when we look at actually, when we look at what's actually running in a client estate, the vast majority of the cloud estate is, is legacy. You know, hopefully it's going on a modernization uh, you know, journey. But um, you know, we find a lot of clients will say to us, I've assessed my portfolio. I've, I've found all of the applications in my organization, or maybe we've done, it, we've done it for them. They kind of take this classic kind of five-hour approach. They try and find the apps and workloads that they should rewrite, replace, refactor, replatform, uh, or whatever. We do all of this incredible analysis to find the workloads that would benefit from a cloud-native journey. And then we realize that actually it's a very difficult thing to do. And the reality is, is that, as I said, very few applications get a genuine cloud-native uh, modernization journey. Uh, a lot of clients will obviously focus on their more strategic applications. They might put them into a PaaS like PCF. But there's an awful lot of enterprise IT left that cannot easily consume uh, a cloud-native journey. And this is really where PKS comes in. And uh, I'll make a few references in this presentation to PCF. Uh, we're here at a pivotal Spring One event. There are a lot of you that I'm sure have got a, a Cloud Foundry or a PCF um, you know, background. We would not be having this conversation. We would not have had this conversation a year ago. Okay? A year ago, we would only be talking about a PaaS transformational journey uh, for clients. And, and what we see in organizations today, your organization could be, could be very similar, is that there are a lot of applications that are trying to reinvent themselves. We want to become a cloud native enterprise. There's typically a transformation program underway. We often find that transformation program would start in the business. Maybe the new digital leadership want to reinvent the company. Everyone certainly wants to change the way that we build and deploy uh, applications. And, and what we tend to find in, in clients is that uh, a Cloud Foundry platform like PCF or, or PAS is often deployed in the business, and then it starts to head down into traditional IT. And it's quite a slow journey, because when you get to traditional IT, you often encounter a number of constraints that make that or impede that journey somewhat. And what clients have been after for, for quite some time is, is what I would call an infrastructure up alternative. I want to go on a cloud native journey. I'm perhaps not ready for the transformational experience around PCF. I've got a certain degree of comfort with an infrastructure led approach. I'm happy with containerization. I'm not quite comfortable with, with a PAS uh, approach. And, and hence what we, we often see clients uh, attempt to do is if a client already has PAS, it started in the business, it's heading down. We're trying to move as many workloads as we can to, to PAS. But inevitably, they'll find that they are kind of impeded by a resistance. There are an awful lot of people that simply cannot take advantage of, of that particular journey. So we, we find and we often position ourselves PKS as a, a more evolutionary alternative to, to PAS. Uh, we'll take you to cloud, but we will take you in a kind of 
maybe not such a, not, not such a pure journey. You're going to get there eventually, but this might be a journey that aligns more with your, your current experience. And whereas PAS, like classic uh, Cloud Foundry, very, very much focus on the developer experience. This is all about code, getting code to release and production as, as quickly as possible. PKS, because it's a containerization, it's a CAS uh, you know, solution, it, its focus is not so much on building solutions rapidly. Its focus is more on day one, day two operations. How do I deploy and run maybe traditional workloads a lot more uh, effectively? The reality is, I think if you are a PCF customer today, you will inevitably need PKS as well. It covers the parts of your estate that PCF cannot quite reach. But having said that, we have a lot of customers who only need PK, PKS. They're on a, uh, a less strict journey. It's not about transformation. It's about finding a more efficient way of running the workloads that they have today. So let me just take you through briefly what clients are saying to us and how we might respond with, with, with PKS. In our experience, for every client that has a pure cloud native strategy based on, say, PCF, there are probably at least another 20 customers that would rather have a containerization approach. And this type of customer is saying, my focus is, is really on container agility. I'm happy containerizing my solutions. I'm happy to use maybe a Docker image as the currency within, within my estate. But I now want the ability to scale up my consumption of containers. And I recognize that Kubernetes is the default industry standard. I don't think anyone would, would dispute that. So we have a lot of customers come to us asking for pure Kubernetes, but something that I can run in production. And, and really what I'm referring to here is that there are an awful lot of organizations that are running raw Kubernetes. They've built it themselves. They've got a homespun environment. And it's really, really difficult taking that to production. And hence, these clients are asking, is there a product out there that will give me the Kubernetes experience, but will polish off all the rough edges? And I'm not here to describe PKS to you. I assume you, you, you've had an introduction. But the missing pieces around network and, and security within SXT, uh, the ease of operation through Opsman, for example, brilliant provisioning through Bosch, these are all things that make a huge difference to Kubernetes customers. So be, we've been really surprised at how easy it's been for us to have a PKS conversation with uh, you know, an open source project, for example. Developers that have become very comfortable with Kubernetes, they now want to take it to production, and they're somewhat blocked because there aren't many easy ways to do that in the market today. We've also had a bit of experience as well migrating customers off other CAS solutions. I'm not going to name them, but people would probably recognize that it's really difficult to take Kubernetes into production. We find a lot of customers are only, or their sole interest in PKS is because it fixes this problem. I can take my current Kubernetes estate and investment and put it into a more stable, robust platform. Another very common use case uh, that we hear from clients, I mentioned earlier, you've probably seen this yourselves, that refactoring solutions for, for Cloud Foundry, this pure cloud native journey, uh, is not easy. I mean, it can be pretty straightforward, but it's a lot of work. And, and clients have to choose the applications that they take on that journey very, very carefully indeed. There are a lot of applications out there that could go to Cloud Foundry, but maybe you don't want to do it. We could refactor the code. We could, we could rewrite it. But some applications, and I would call them older legacy applications in particular, are just too complicated, OK? There's a lot of dependencies built into a lot of these applications. You've got your code. You've got an app server. might have a load balancer. You've certainly got a database in there and a bunch of other things as well. And untangling that complexity as you migrate to Cloud Foundry might not give you a useful business case. And a lot of clients are probably more comfortable by saying there are some applications that do not warrant that investment in a rewrite or a, a modernization, a refactoring journey. I simply want to containerize them. I want to wrap them up, move them into a Kubernetes platform, and find a way of running those at scale uh, in production. 
I feel quite ashamed actually showing this slide because we shouldn't really be talking about lift and shift at uh, an event like this, but the, uh, the uncomfortable reality in your organization and, and, and many others is when large enterprises move to cloud, they're doing so because they think they will find efficiencies. They think they will save money, they'll speed up, what, whatever. Sometimes when enterprises move to cloud, they're doing it because a compelling event has taken place. Maybe they've decided to shut down the data center. You know, that happens very, very frequently. A client will come to us and say, shut me down, move everything to cloud. And what a lot of clients have done, and you've probably experienced this yourselves, is a lot of people have done a simple lift and shift to cloud. They've simply done a V to V, they've picked up a virtual machine, and they've dropped it down on whatever their chosen cloud platform happens to be. Uh, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to save money with that approach. In fact, most clients will come back to us after a year and say, my bills have gone up. I've just moved an inefficient workload from one place to another place. Nothing has uh, essentially changed. And what people have known for quite some time, of course, is there's a lot of wastage in applications today. When, when I look inside my VMs, I might be surprised if I've got more than 10% utilization on average, for example. And I don't, I don't want to move that waste uh, you know, to the cloud. And we all know that we can save or we'll reduce that footprint through containerization, maybe a third, maybe 80, even 90% reduction if I'm, if I'm lucky. So we've been able to do that for quite some time, but it's been really difficult taking that containerization approach into scaled production. It's, it's a nightmare. It's, it's really, really difficult because a lot of clients have decided to choose Kubernetes as their orchestration, you know, their CAS uh, approach this journey, but it's a lot of work. There's a lot of manual effort involved PKS, surprisingly, is a really simple solution to this problem. Containerize your application. Don't worry about, um, uh, you know, expect a smaller footprint uh, along the way, but use PKS to deploy those applications straight to the cloud. It's quite a simple use case. It gives a lot of payback to the client, and it's a simple extension to a containerization journey that perhaps they're already very, very comfortable with. I mentioned this briefly because we, we often overlook this. When we migrate solutions to, to cloud, when we refactor them to, to cloud native, we're very, very focused on making these custom apps 12-factor kind of friendly or you know, cloud native uh, you know, applications. Most of our clients have got an awful lot of stuff that they, they just simply don't own the source code to. You know, it's a packaged application, it's a custom application. It might be running on WebSphere, it could be a classic three-tier web application or whatever, but they certainly don't own the source code to that. They've got very limited choices in terms of what they do with some of these binary uh, you know, payloads, uh, but clients cannot live without them. In many cases, their custom apps have a dependency uh, on them as well. And you know, whilst it's possible to break apart these packaged applications and deploy them onto a number of platforms, or indeed containerize them and put them anywhere I like. Uh, you know, there are some severe limitations on what the vendor will allow you to do. And, you know, vendors have become very comfortable with a containerization approach. You can often get a, a Docker image, for example, of your favorite sort of piece of middleware. Um, and some vendors are happy for their solutions to be run in a Kubernetes, uh, you know, environment. But we're starting to see clients now think about using PKS as a runtime environment for, for packaged applications as well. Maybe I could take my existing uh, solution, containerize it, shrink its footprint, deploy it into PKS, and benefit from those advantages around you know, provisioning, security, you know, ease of deployment. This is, if anyone here is a VMware uh, you know, customer, you, you probably don't need me to show this, this slide, but we, We've got a lot of clients who uh, they're on a hybrid journey. They've got uh, a sunk investment in their on-prem estate. They might operate what you could call a, a VM farm today. Okay. Going forwards, that client might want to remain on-prem, but they, they want to view their, their estate in a different way. You know, we're, we're familiar with the concept of a software-defined data center. Clients want that flexibility to kind of reprogram the network, 
uh, decide how the resources in that DC are kind of deployed or assigned uh, to applications. So because PKS, of course, can and should stand ideally on a vSphere, vRealize environment, there are a lot of clients who are saying to us, maybe what I'll do is simply deploy a PRA hardware stack. I'll put PKS onto that, and I will use that as the foundation for my software-defined DC going forwards. And some of these clients have got no intention to go to public cloud. They just want to find a more elegant, efficient approach to run in their DC going forwards. And this is why we found you know, an awful lot of interest in, in our own PRA environment, because uh, you know, people have started to realize that rather than, than using a VM as the kind of the resource unit inside uh, of their estate, maybe they should be using a container-based approach. You know, it reduces the footprint, speed things up considerably. So we do see a lot of clients wanting to consider kind of PKS as the foundation for their sort of SDDC journey two going forwards. Another key thing that we see a lot of, maybe we're just unfortunate, but we, we, we do see a lot of this. Um, you know, in, in a perfect world, when, when, when a client decides to go on a cloud-native journey, you're working with business stakeholders, they're out to transform the business, they might be taking a digital-first, um, you know, approach. Uh, and it's great if you've got stakeholders who are thinking in that way. The reality, though, is that most cloud journeys are actually executed by the infrastructure team within your organization. You're dealing with stakeholders who might not have an app dev background. You're dealing with infrastructure leaders who have not, not been compelled to take a cloud-native journey themselves. You know, we know that they will, but they, they've, not, they've not done it before. So they, they have a certain comfort today, which is based on their experience with classic IT infrastructure in particular. And there are an awful lot of IT people out there that will not go to a PaaS. They don't understand it. They think they don't control it. They think it's magic. So they, you know, they don't trust it. They are really comfortable with containerization. And again, the, you know, the take up of, of Kubernetes has helped here you know, considerably. And, and we often position PKS as a kind of a bridge to the future. Let's, let's get you up and running on a containerization based approach. Uh, we'll let you see the benefits uh, you know, from that. And then maybe you might just get a little bit more comfortable with what comes next, which is that kind of stronger PaaS-based uh, you know, journey. The other thing that we find with, with a lot of clients is, uh, you know, we, we, we might all joke quite, quite often that uh, Pivotal are a very opinionated company. The, the great benefit of adopting a platform like PCF is it's hugely opinionated, right? It controls kind of what you do, how you deploy the thing, and we can probably see those benefits quite clearly. If you run the infrastructure in a global enterprise, some of these PaaS platforms scare you incredibly. They scare you because they dictate what the architecture should be. They scare you because they put an enormous footprint down on your estate. And anyone who, who, who might run PCF today, you know, it's, it's not easy in terms of a consumption perspective to get off the ground. It takes quite a lot of resources to get PCF up um, in, in your estate. And you know, the, these infra stakeholders are probably sat there thinking, that, that's not the way I work. You know, I'm used to having control over my estate, and I want control going forwards. And when we encounter a client who is, is, is really sort of making that statement to us, it, it's quite obvious that they're on an infrastructure up journey towards cloud native. We would love to position PCF to them, PAS, but it's just a step too far they're a lot more comfortable with, with containers. They, they get them, they understand them, they've undoubtedly had exposure you know, to them. Um, and it was a point I made earlier too, whilst they're very comfortable with containers, everyone's got this concern about how do we get it to run in production? You know, the sort of scale that large enterprises need to operate at, um, it, it causes them a lot, of, a, a lot of concern. So again, when we do meet an infrastructure stakeholder who, who takes this approach, and there are many people, quite rightly, who, who would form this opinion, uh, it is very easy for us and for you to position PKS as probably 
the better solution for that, that type of person. You're on a cloud journey, you're gonna use technology that you're comfortable with, it's gonna need a lot more investment in control and kind of operations, but this is what they're used to, right? So you, you may just find yourselves that uh, if you're confronted with trying to win over uh, the infrastructure guys, PKS is a great way of kind of getting uh, you know, cloud native um, you know, through the door. And just briefly, I mean, just to summarize, um, what makes a, a company or an application look like a good fit uh, for container services? Uh, I, I think from, from our perspective, whenever we encounter a client who is saying, I've got PCF, I've got PAS rather, and I'm really, really happy with it, and I'm modernizing my strategic applications, I'm refactoring them to, uh, to go into PAS, they will often turn down applications as not being suitable for a PAS journey because of real concerns over complexity or dependencies with old legacy systems, uh, you know, component tree or, or whatever. And, and sometimes the best response to a client who's challenged with that sort of solution is rather than them deciding not to migrate that solution at all, we can deploy PKS specifically for that type of workload. We'll, we'll keep the application as it is, We'll containerize it, we'll keep the dependencies as, uh, as, as you expect, and we will kind of move that into PKS whilst your other workloads may be on their kind of own uh, you know, journey to, to PAS. Uh, and as I mentioned before, uh, instantly, whenever we are, we are confronted with a client who says, we've standardized on Kubernetes, or we've standardized on containers, uh, you're gonna find yourself having a hybrid or a multi-cloud conversation at, at some point with that client, they're gonna be saying, is there, a, is there an environment that will allow me to deploy the same experience on-prem and in public cloud as well? Okay, so that's one of the reasons why we deployed PKS into GCP as well as on-prem. It's one product that kind of does, that does it all you know, for us. Um, so, so any client that has that fixation on a containerization journey tends to be a bit more comfortable with, with PKS. So we would instantly kind of recommend and position PKS uh, for that type of client. Um, and then finally, um, and this just happens all, all, all too frequently, uh, there are a lot of customers that do not want any other conversation around their cloud native journey. They're on an infrastructure up journey. They're really not bothered about what goes on um, in the business. Their job is to make infrastructure more efficient. And again, we can't position PAS to that type of client. It's not really relevant for, for their use cases. But PKS for us is, is, is that kind of perfect kind of opportunity to um, you know, position for that type of client. What we tend to find, of course, is, I mentioned this earlier too, any client that is running PAS today will inevitably end up running PKS. I can't perceive any reason why that would not, why that would not happen. Where, where this seems to be going, and you know, those of you who've had experience with, with, with PKS uh, will know that it's, it's not that similar to PAS today. They're actually kind of separate different things, all right? There's some commonality there like Bosch, you know, for example, but they are two separate installations. Uh, that, that will disappear going forward. So you know, increasingly, a customer running PAS today, classic, classic Cloud Foundry, um, now has this opportunity to find a solution, a better solution for some of their uh, alternative workloads, things that don't justify a, a PAS journey. We can package them up uh, into PKS. And uh, you know, going forwards, it, it seems quite clear that we should end up with a unified environment where from a client's perspective, they just see a, you know, an estate of workloads and applications. Some will be deployed to PKS as appropriate, others will go to PAS there will be a certain, I think, merging of, of environments um, you know, over time. Um, and in our own experience, briefly, we, um, we, we took a PCF team and made them implement PKS, okay? Uh, it was quite painful for us because people that are used to using PASs kind of get quite lazy over time. They get to forget about infrastructure and, and, and all of those things. And, um, so we, you know, we, we went to the effort of deploying PKS. Uh, we, built, we built up a PRA environment. We 
put VMware and all the bits and pieces on that, and then we followed up with, 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 with PKS as well. And um, that journey, you know, if you're a PaaS person going down to containerization, um, it, it's incredible the things that you realize that you, you lose control over, right? You, we're so used to PAS doing everything for us. In a PKS environment, I have to think a lot more deeply and carefully uh, about what I'm going to do. Um, but, you know, in contrast, those people that run infrastructure environments today, uh, as I said, they, they find PAS a little bit too difficult to understand. It's a massive conceptual leap. Uh, they would prefer to work with things that they know. So, you know, in conclusion, this, this coming together of a, an infrastructure up journey enabled by PKS, it satisfies the needs of a large part of my organization, combined with that more transformational journey around PAS, where it's all about developer productivity. I don't have to worry about the infrastructure. It's a pretty good marriage for a lot of our, our clients. It's, it's working well for us. We're quite happy to run both PKS alongside um, you know, PAS. But um, yeah, we're, we're learning a lot uh, along the way. Um, we're prepared to share our experience with you, by the way, because we, we built our labs to share with clients, by the way. So the one thing I will leave you with in the interest of time is um, I know there are a lot of people that are quite keen and want to get hands on with PKS as, as, as quickly as possible. Uh, there are a lot of PAS installations that would love to sort of experience this. Um, we can give you a demo of PKS today. If you want to come to the booth, you might have had one already. Uh, but more importantly, it's actually very, very difficult to find a PKS environment today to, to play with, okay? Particularly one that is hybrid and multi-cloud. We have these running inside of our labs. Our labs are open for customers to use. You can come in and experiment with them. So if you'd like to get hands-on with PKS, particularly if you'd like to do that in an environment that has an on-prem stack as well as a public cloud um, experience, you're more than welcome to contact us. We'd love to sort of show you what PKS can do. Thank you very much. <laughs>